they they have the same uh, same grift same grift these young people are thinking that they i don't think i cried that's how desperate he is the the peter the peter jerson but like he like he's the you know take control of your life you know you need to make your bed in the morning look and he cries at you know the quote unquote beauty of his own words like this guy had to be put on a voluntary comatose because he was yeah. that addicted to benzodiazepine and you're telling me to get my life together yeah. get the out of here okay. just a piece of yeah. i'm not a bad person but i'm a quick person most people are oh. slow and stupid i'm fat okay but hypothetically yeah, would someone going, need you know uh uh disabled day no hurt people in wheelchairs trying to use this space and those 45 there hypothetically could be seconds to buy this so no no one loses the last time i uh took one of these spaces and goes, excuse me are you disabled and i replied i am actually breathe you don't need a vape this guy's you ever seen anyone with a vape yeah. Have, you ever, have you ever sat in a room? Yeah. We go, wait, oh, let yeah. me just go. My vape's done charging. Yeah. Load it up. This guy smokes cigars. Keep that yeah, in I mind. I smoke cigars, but I know what the f And people who vape know what the f are doing. Give me a big fat cigar. I'm risking <laughs> cancer to look like a mafia boss. Fine. That sucks and that's bad. Like, you should be smoking cigars in moderation <clears throat> and not, you know, actively killing their, your lungs. Like, come on, man. I'm not sitting there smoking cigars and going, I can't believe this is bad for me. No, like these children. And what kind of parent lets their vaping is infinitely less worse than you than cigar less worse for you than cigars. Sixteen uh, year old vape anyway. If I had a sixteen year old son, he's like, I'll go to vape. Get the fuck out of here, vape. I think I've covered this. What's, what's up? I'm up with a bunch of peasants in the holding area. No, no, I haven't. Carry the lame tape. You ain't got time to vape. You gotta do push no conventions and be dorks. I will not have nerves as children. I refuse. Okay, literally. Every one of your little fanboys is an angsty teenager looking for some social validation in life, looking for some, you know, connections, especially with women, looking for business advice. All your fans are in the category of loser, Tate. No kids. You used to have a nerd carry the lame tape. If my son is a nerd, one of us has to die, him or me, and I'll challenge him to mortal combat. Jesus Christ. Imagine one day you're sitting in Paris. Yeah, right. You're going to kill your son because he's nerdy. Yeah, all right. Yeah. You're sitting there having fucking coffee, and terrorists roll through their AKs, and the person next to you has their brains blown out. You're gonna stand there and be like, waiting to die. What? What? I'm gonna be like, bang! Oh, I've seen that before. Okay, boom, boom, duck and dive and take one terrorist out. Next, get the AK, go Rambo. I don't play. You think you're gonna be some sort of action hero? The moment your friend you know, gets shot in the head. Like you say, he just says dumb. Yeah. Well, yeah. The, ocean, the ocean has waves. Oh. You gotta be careful. You gotta ride the waves like everybody else. If not, you're gonna drown. Oh, look what he said. He made sense. Shut the. F yeah, like these platitudes that have been repeated yeah. over and over again. Yeah, yeah, boy. Okay. My flight's delayed. Yeah, you thank you. Do you have salt? Yes, of course. Perfect. But when my flight's delayed, it's not like when your flight's delayed. I'm not with a bunch of peasants in a peasant holding area with a tiny Starbucks somewhere in the corner. No, when my flight's delayed. I'm not with a bunch of peasants. You know, uh, I reserve the right to be expressly classist whenever I. On. You know, like, I, I don't sit with the general public. I am so bourgeois to the point where I get, you know, catered meals, and it, whenever my flight gets delayed, I'm not with a bunch of brokies, okay? Like, how the people find this guy f***ing charismatic? It's like, yeah. for conservatives, the biggest challenge for you is to be the biggest douchebag you can. And then you'll get elected, you know, serve in office... Be their biggest demagogue. Be their hero. Whatever. Let's have our meal early. KFC. In fried chicken. What else am I going to eat? Obviously. Obviously oh, power needs the world championships. Nothing's going to change. Thank you very, very much. Hold on. Let me shut up the mic. I'll be right back. Yep. Actually, now that you mention it, uh, I'll, you know, take a break too a bit.
Ladies and gentlemen, I'm out of bed. What the hell? Hold on. Come on. Yeah. I gotta wait for free till he comes back. Where's Andrew Tate, man? Yeah, Andrew Tate. There he is. All right, Andrew Tate is gonna go to jail for the, the 10, 20 years. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No problem. I, say, uh, I strongly order food. Too. All right. Ago. Yeah. Oh, I'm actually uh, hungry, but I'll continue the stream. Get all your friends around. All, all right. So uh, right now. I'm going to go. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. 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 Just, Just um, uh, you know, uh, press leave X studio. Out. Yeah. 100%. I could X out. It doesn't hurt. You, okay. All right. Take yeah. care, buddy. All right. Yep. Well, let's do this every week. You can't just say two, three weeks and don't do it. We have to yeah. 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 Let's yeah. Absolutely. Good. Okay, pal. Take care. Yeah. Let's leave. leave. Yep. All right, let's. Is the, is the music still playing? No, yeah, apparently it is. Okay. Mike's moat for a party. They all turn up, pour out sparkling water. Hey, everyone, let's have a glass of water together. Water can't hurt anybody. We're all probably dehydrated anyway. What's the worst water can do? Let's have a nice glass of water and everyone's gonna drink it. When you see that one dude, oh, look at these bubbles. Never speak to me. Well, like what, what? 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 You think you should dissolve all of your currently existing friendships because. Somebody didn't like sparkling water. You know, in, in that case, actually, yes, I sort of agree with you. Everybody that you thought was your friend should dissolve their friendship with you. And everybody you associate with should dissolve their friendship with you. You should not like sparkling water because it tastes like absolute. Okay, Andy boy. That's what you should do. Like, what a deeply, deeply pedantic and insecure and childish reason to disconnect with somebody and to dissolve your friendship. Do you think that's sustainable long term? Do you think that's actually a viable solution socially? I don't. And neither should these, you know, um, 12 year old Greek boys that watch this sort of content. It is such horrible content. It is such bad advice. Color? Yeah, I had a mixed reviews on the color. Some people said they color like it. Color Zerbagatti. They don't like it. I said, well, what color Zerbagatti? <laughs> oh, <laughs> Wow, I have not pre-watched this. Uh, I'm an oracle. I'm a mind reader, guys. I come home. My four wives are sitting there. Yeah, express classism. Another thing, too. Oddly enough, the red pill will you know, frame men as economically marginalized. Oh, we're expected to be the breadwinners. We're the downtrodden in society. And at the same time, Kid is classist. He shames men for not having the same luxuries he does and encourages them to, you know, fight within the capitalist system to be entrepreneurs. Like, which one is it? Are you maintaining this, you know, like right-wing right -wing red pill insult type populist rhetoric or are you this, you know, hyper-capitalist who wants to play into the system? Get your own narrative straight. Because to be an actual ideology, to provide actual solutions, it needs to be the least bit coherent. Okay? Let's, uh... Oh, shit. Let's present it again. They've seen on the news there's new deadly contagion. Andrew, you need to wear a new deadly contagion. I pick up my sword. I am the commander of this house. I decide if there's a contagion. I decide what. Uh, you decide if there's a contagion or not by masking up, social distancing, and getting vaccinated. That's how you decide, based on empirical evidence, which is, you know, scientifically proven. You have a hypothesis, you test it against reality. That's how you decide if there's a contagion or not. Not by saying, I take my sword. I am the commander of this house. I decide whether the coronavirus actually gets into my lungs, suffocates me to death, you know, builds up fluid in my lungs, and actually kills me. I decide when that happens. I do. God, he's such an idiot. Look. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this on air. I had a girlfriend who was a vegan. I didn't know she was a vegan. Unfortunately, I found out. She said, oh, I'll never cook meat for you. I said, look, well, I'll be honest with you. Right now, we're going to end up splitting up because you live in my house and I'm paying the bills. And if I want steak, you're cooking it. That was a good two-hour argument until she eventually cooked the steak. Of course she did. What she going to do? Lose me? She cooked the steak. If she was somewhat sane, she would have never dated you in the first place. So you're clearly dealing with someone who's probably 
okay, guys, I'm not armchairing, but come on, like, she's dating Tate. So, at the very, very least, we can at least hypothesize that she's someone deeply insecure, really susceptible to propaganda, you know, feeling lost in life, feeling inadequate, okay? It's the kind of mind, both man and a woman, and... You know, I don't think NBs are falling for Tate's rhetoric, but that's the kind of mind, the insecure mind, Tate attracts. Okay? She sat there, she pretended she was upset. Two weeks later, she's eating me. I converted her, I fixed her. One person at a time, I'm gonna fix the world. This is the reality. If you're some fat dude, and you just had a heart attack, and I don't really know you. No, this is, we've covered this one. This is the, um, you know, um, cigarette heart attack thing. Was outside enjoying their life. Coffee, coffee. I hate happy children. Anyway. Wait. I thought the whole crux of Tate's movement was to make men happy, to actually give them fulfillment in life. You can't, on the one hand, say men are depressed, men are, are facing some sort of mental health crisis, and then say, I hate male happiness. I hate happiness in general. Like, it absolutely disgusts me seeing other people besides me happy. You're like, God, like... Make get out of your own way. You're your own biggest enemy, dude. Like actually have a coherent worldview. You don't. And that's why I can't take you, you know, seriously as an interlocutor. That's why I don't respect you. I mean, you probably don't care about my respect. But I actually care when somebody online, somebody in the public discourse, has a coherent moral framework that I can test. You do not, my friend. You're all losers. We've discussed this before. I'm the king of the world. There's no power in sushi. Okay, I'm glad you're realizing your fans are losers. Point of food, food and. Oh, this is with the sushi one. Okay. The win. Sushi. You go on a date with the, and we're going through the menu. I'll try the sushi. What? Five million dollars. Yeah, a lot of these, you know, have clips we've already seen before because you know, there's actually only a finite amount of Tate clips out there. Like, I don't think. Content creation was his largest source of revenue, but now I think it makes up a good chunk of it because he has this whole Tate speech um, platform on Rumble, so. Having five million dollars when you're young is much better than having billions when you're 70. What the f*** do you money when you're old? Your dick doesn't work. You're tired. You don't want um, okay, yeah, I, I can definitely see that because, you know, okay, you, you can definitely invest the five million dollars, you can start businesses, you can put it into safe index funds, you can put it into, you know, these retirement plans, you can do a lot with it, yeah, so. I want to go places, you're decrepit, you're slow, there's nothing left to do at that age. Bro, I need a mask, there's corona, I'm, I'm Okay, yeah, yeah, that, that's, wow, actually a reasonable clip from Tate, I did not expect that. Please, corona, I'm so scared, oh no, no, too, please. Oh my god, the disease, Thank you. Oh, god, please. Close one. Thank you, bro, thank you, I was so worried, I was so a lot of people ask me and oh another very coherent uh short from tate you know very informative life-changing empirical and my answer simple Why oh this is the machete one, one uh one like my house. <laughs> we've come full circle we're running out of tate clips to cover my channel is going to die since i'm running out of content i have very little tate content to cover and very little beast content to cover uh this is the end of the free project um we still have um, a bit more Tate content to go over, so. Alrighty here. Andrew Tate. 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 You don't like what I do, but you watch everything I do. You're still a fan. Nice. No, a fan is somebody who adulates somebody. A fan is somebody who actually appreciates somebody's work. I do not appreciate your advice. I do not appreciate your content because I find it to be laughable, incoherent, and most of your advice is at best useless and at worst extremely harmful to the men you try to, cult an, uh, uh, un, uh, to cultivate an audience from. I'm not a fan. Andrew Tate. Like... Okay, is somebody who criticizes you and has little to no respect for you a fan? Come on, man. Andrew, nice to meet you. I'm trying. So how did you get here today? Uh, I flew in. I flew in this morning. Flew in. It's different. Something different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump on the jet. 
It doesn't matter if it's one we day. Wait, jump on the jet? How did you get here today? Uh, I flew in. I flew in this morning. Flew in. It's different. It's like different. different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump oh. on the jet. It doesn't matter if it's... Jump on the... I don't know what that means. Monday, Tuesday, all the way to Sunday. What's the word of the day? Cat! It's pretty easy. I don't think you should spe be spending literally every day of your life focusing on cash. Okay, maybe five days a week for, you know, you obviously need business days. <laughs> Definitely to one extent or another, but that it should not be your entire life, especially when it's the weekend, especially when it's your vacationing. Those are your days off for a reason. Humanity can just not keep on going and keep on going without either going insane or physically dying. So. You can only win if you never lose. If you never make mistakes and you never lose, guess what happens? Oops. Delete. Men who go to the Isn't everybody eventually gonna make mistakes inevitably? <laughs> the gym every uh, this is very unrealistic. On top of being, you know, internally incoherent and inconsistent. Day, regardless of how he feels, will always beat the man who goes to the gym when he feels like going to the gym. Well, I'm basically Bruce Wayne. What is Batman? Wait, okay, what? Being rich. Uh, the men who go to the gym every single day, regardless of how he feels, will always beat the man. Wait, don't your muscles need time to rebuild? Like, okay, when you work out, you're intentionally physically destroying your muscles so they can come back and be built stronger than they were the day you actually, you know, attempted to lift. But they need a recovery period. They need a few days to de-swell and to actually collect the protein to absorb the nutrients and to build themselves back up again. So you're continuously just destroying your muscles without any gains whatsoever. Like God. And who goes to the gym when he feels like going to the gym. Well, I'm basically Bruce Wayne. What is Batman's superpower? Being rich and being able to fight. That's all he has. Remind you of anyone? He's rich. Uh, no, but the difference between Bruce Wayne and you is that, Tate, you are the criminal. Batman beats up criminals. That's the fundamental difference, bro. And he can fight. That's us. That's all you need to save the world. Oh, I don't actually eat gl Shut the f Do that every single time. I guarantee gluten is ours. 99% of the time, the answer is work hard. My girl left me, what do I do? Hit the gym. My friend died, what do I do? Become exceptional. I I'm sad, what do I do? Train. Working harder is never gonna not help. People what? Wait, n n no, if your girlfriend left you, or whatever the f example was he gave, and your friend just died, you need therapy. You need to strengthen your social safety, not social safety net, your social network. So, so you can actually recover from that loss and move forward with your life. Like, improving yourself and doing business is absolutely not going to help. This is why I say your advice is so fucking harmful, dude. I really think that I'm, I'm fat and I'm lazy. Are you actually fat and lazy? Am I fat? Uh, knowing Aiden Ross, yes, that is an accurate characterization. Am I fat? Oh, my. Split the Earth's core with my bare hands. What? 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 No. Okay. Aiden Ross is a Twitch streamer, or and now he's, um, I think, a kick streamer. So he's extremely, he, he is extremely lazy. Some of the worst content a, a streamer could produce that I've ever seen. Um, but I don't think he should be comparing himself to others at the same time. Like, Jesus Christ. If he wants the Andrew Tate lifestyle, yeah, he's got to hustle up. He's got to move forward. You know, like, he's got to do a lot more. But I do not think it's constructive to constantly, you know, compare yourself to men. Niche down, uh, do what you're good at, or at the very least, do what you're eventually going to be good at. Do what eventually you know you're going to be good at. And then just build upon the world make it better off than you found it via your skills. Don't constantly go out comparing yourself to other men. That is not going to work, people. That's not going to work. Ugh, I hate this content so much. Don't study medicine. Study, study, study. Give up your whole life in school. Then you can um, do people who do good in business not study business tactics? Take... Get to be a doctor. You can't even buy a sports car. Sometimes... Most doctors can afford, can and do buy sports cars. Come on, man. This advice is nonsensical, dude. Very Islamic, very traditional, very... Well, it, it actually is red-pilled, unironically. But this is at odds with Islam. Islam incentivizes 
a man to have one wife. Now, historically, they did have multiple wives, but I think muftis and, you know, various sects of Islam actively discourage, you know, non-monogamy. So, you know, th this is not Islamic at all. It, his worldview is so inconsistent. The ego, realize you ain't Most of you could go look in the mirror right now, and if you were totally honest with yourself, go look in the mirror and be honest with yourself and say, if I was a hot, would I And the answer... Yeah, because you're hot? <laughs> what? For most of you, is no. So you can't be mad at women. They've got... If I was much, much hotter than I am now, and I was female, I, I, I would probably, you know, physically f <laughs> like, because I'm definitionally hot, right? I, I swear to you, if you make sure that your actions, your intention, your will, and your thoughts is true, the world is absolutely and utterly open for your complete conquest. What do you mean true? I think if you're determined, you can accomplish pretty much anything you actively put your mind to. Well, like, what do you mean true? It's doing everything you're supposed to do, but deep inside, when you look in the mirror at night, you know you are sad, and you are sad because your soul hurts because you need God. You don't have to accept this one. This is a choice. Okay, but is having you know a harem of thirty women, having setting seventy-five million dollars, you know, gonna fulfill that spiritual void? No, the people who indulge in that lifestyle are actively not spiritual. If you wanted, you know, your soul healed, you wouldn't be, you know, looking to f bitches and get money. You'd be getting closer to God. You'd be. Or reading Quran verses, you'd be reading the, um, you know, canonic Sahih books that Islam prescribes to its subscribers. Okay, you'd be praying constantly. You'd be going to Mecca. You'd be asked, asking your, you know, local muftis uh, questions about Allah. You wouldn't do this whole, you know, business grift. You'd make yourself an income, then get closer to God. Drew, the biggest waste of potential I've ever seen. Because you could be so smart, but you just don't listen. Smart than you now, bitch. I made you busy. No, you're not, dude. As I've demonstrated, and as literally every piece of content on this channel is proven, no, you're not, man. The people you are learning from in school aren't even fucking rich. What business professors ever had a business? They're brokies. <laughs> You're fucking broke. So, school's a scam. But no, no, I can guarantee you the vast majority of business professors have actively had businesses and actively do have businesses on the side. You're, you're, you're absolutely full of it, dude. You have enjoyed comfort when I have it, and that's fine, but don't expect me to look at you as my equal because you're not. Why would I put myself through hell to be me and then meet someone who didn't put themselves through hell and then treat them like my equal? No. They were brothers. Wait, what? Why would they were twins? My equal. No. Why would I put myself through hell to be me and then meet someone who didn't put themselves through hell and then treat them like my equal? No. They were brothers. Life isn't fair a lot of the time, but society could help itself to make itself more equitable. You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> like this is socialism, you know, bringing people together and making sure we have empathy, you know putting ourselves on equal footing, redistribution of wealth and stuff like that, you know, reciprocation, basic empathy. I mean, this is fundamental leftism. But y'all don't subscribe to that because you think it's, you know, degenerate. You think it's too progressive for your tastes. Jesus Christ. The answer is to stop doing things that waste your time and apply yourself to something important. Everyone knows what a push-up is. Do 10,000 of them a day. That's the thing. Okay, literally everybody would rather be doing productive things. However, people get distracted. Doing productive things isn't exactly the most fun thing. It isn't ex exactly the least um, physically exerting thing, the least mentally exerting thing. So you need to help them not get distracted. You can't just say, okay, y y you know, just uh, force yourself to do productive things. No, Tristan, that's not how it works, man. Thing that's ever happened to humanity. Why? It's terrible. You're going to wake up and just eat what? a bunch of food. Or like just the idea of breakfast. I think that breakfast is the worst thing that's ever happened to humanity. It's terrible. <laughs> You're going to wake up and just eat a bunch of food. <laughs> no, no, no. You, you did. Uh, I'm utterly in denial that he said that. Okay, breakfast. Google it up now, y'all. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. If you do not get vitamins, minerals, the fundamental nutrients that you need to proceed on with your day, you are going to be screwed. You're going to feel miserable. You're going to feel like
until you eat lunch. And even then, something in your you know mood, in your vibe is going to be off. Okay? Do not do that. Sorry, let's um, actually turn it up here. The people who are in charge of the world, all they've ever wanted from the beginning is control. These people are above money, they're above economies, they're above the dollar, they're above the lay, they're above this shit. They want people to comply. When you're at that level, all you care about is that the, the idiots at the bottom comply. This is what you need, and you have to put systems in place to ensure people comply. And one of the easiest systems you can do is by manipulating information. Hey, hey, what footwear do you I didn't realize I was, you know, muted, but consent manufacturing, as Tate just described, yeah, that's definitely a thing. But the problem is capitalism. But you would play into that capitalist system. I don't know why. You're, like, your, your prescription for men is for them to be entrepreneurs, for them to be these independent freelancers, to not be tethered down to some, you know, wagey job, as you describe it. But at the same time, you're blaming capitalism and its consent manufacturing and its disinformation for the brainwashing and indoctrination that goes on. Like, come on, like, make it make sense, man. Power of my body. I put kilos on a bar and lift it up over and over and over again until I can't move. So I have to do something with that piece of shit. Now this time, all these personal trainers talking cost. This muscle, this lap toy. Okay, easier said than done. Like, everybody would rather be lifting instead of doing something totally unproductive okay well how do you overcome that give them advice on how to defeat that feeling of uh, maybe i can do it tomorrow or, uh, maybe it's not worth it you know my body's in good enough shape how do you make them defeat that man your life is shit something's on the you're supposed to inspire you to be you're not supposed to be and that's the truth you don't deserve happiness until you get up and go get it i Buddy, oh my god, dude. I, I think everybody deserves happiness, okay? Oh my god, Th this is just the most depressing advice ever, and the most wrong advice ever, might I add. <sighs> I'm starting to feel sick. <laughs> this is what the Matrix wants you to believe. Work I don't know what that was. Life goes on. Take care. Hang in there. Nothing lasts forever. Yeah, that's capitalism. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. But Tate, isn't your prescription for men to, you know, just be entrepreneurs until the day they die? Like, what kind of a shallow life is that? What kind of hyper-capitalist dystopia are you prescribing for the world? And just go with the flow. Not what I can flow, not what can crash. Be water, my friend. I disagree. If you're like water, you're necessary for life. You are scary when you're enraged. You're beautiful when you're calm. You're, you're so many things when you're like water, right? So if I'm enraged, it's like water behind a dam. You just got to put the dam. I actually think that's pretty poetic, yeah. Dam in, in place, get the turbo, the hydroelectrics, but it don't tsunami your life. Put the energy somewhere. The most push-ups I've ever done in my life was in a jail cell in Stevenage. The guy who was checking us in, real fat, arrogant police officer. And I was telling him I should have been arrested and I was in a- Oh, anti-cop? Oh, Tate's getting based now. And everything he goes, well, we don't often make mistakes. Just to come, checking me and taking my fingerprints, all this crap. And I saw that he had the cameras for the cells from the back. So when I went to my police cell, they gave me some book, worst book I ever read. So I'd read three pages, 50 push ups, three pages, 50 push ups. So I did that for like an hour, and when they took me back out. Is this uh, before you got arrested for <laughs> trafficking in grape? Ah, uh, it's, it's hard to tell with this guy because he's just that criminal. Now, fat guy goes, oh, Iron Man, to make fun of me. So I thought, now I know he's watching. And he's jealous, so now I have to do the push-ups. So after like three hours of this, I'm at the point. That's kind of pathetic that you're just doing push-ups despite this guy. I I don't think I'd give a f about what a cop says. My arms are like jelly. Generally. But I'm getting up, look at the camera like <laughs> just pushing out these awful push-ups. I was in I was there for 23 hours. I slept for like six, seven hours of it. So the rest of the time was three pages of push-ups, staring at the camera. I was watching a, a podcast from Andrew That's kind of pathetic. Like I think a true alpha would be yeah, I, I don't believe in alphas, but I think if there were to exist this alpha construct, a true alpha would not give a f about what some fat scumbag cop has to say. How women use men, and that's when my eyes open, and that's this isn't Tate. I could never use you. You don't drive a Benz. You don't drive a Mazda. Why do I need to drive a Benz? You don't drive a Mazda. You don't drive a Mazda. You don't have nothing for me to do. 
Do you still love him? No. I so listen up. Let's see what the American public says. 71% to 29% in favor of the plaintiff. What is the context of this? Where, where is Tate? I, I don't care about this. Uh, how often do you? Oh, they just shoehorn him in at the last moment because you know it somehow needs to be tangentially related. Uh, I can stay here publicly, and I have not met once in maybe, maybe ten years. Damn, never. I don't think I'd literally be able to pull it off because God's always watching. God loves me. Okay. I mean, God. But God is completely fine. Keep in mind, Allah, the Muslim God. Um, is completely fine with you having a harem of 30 women you're probably not married to, some of whom are minors, knowing that girls he traffics and gets on cam, and is completely fine with you constantly drinking, constantly flirting with women, you know, putting them on cams, forcing them into making porn. He's fine with all this quote-unquote degenerate <laughs> You would call degenerate and progressive if it were literally any other person partaking in it? He's fine with that? Allah is congruent with those types of morals? You start to sound like a leftist every day. Well, minus the trafficking. I don't think any real leftist would, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> use the love for women method to, you know, f uh, fraudulently get women to come to Romania and then take their passports so they can't leave. But yeah. Yeah. <sighs> We had it all to lose, we had it all to gain. I know it hurts when you hear my name. There's no sun without rain, no joy without pain. Whoever made souls made hearts the same. Distance kills fake love and shows you what's real. I know the deal, I can play hard steel. Distance seems to make it so much harder to heal. One more night of your touch, just one more steel. Let me tell you a secret. You know, wow. Negative energy is real and it's, That's nice. it's very, very sticky. If you hang around someone who's negative and talk- Oh, woo. He's negative, and they say negative things. All the other negative energy in the universe hears this person and says, Ah, this person is susceptible to our- Let's attack him. They attract him. Me and my team, we all Okay, so I, I think he just means, you know, a bad vibe. You know, people who are depressing to be around generally tend to depress you. But I don't like the use of word... I don't like the use of the word energy in this instance, because energy has always meant the capacity to do work. I, I, I don't... Uh, I don't like this. This, um, you know, semantical condorsion. You've had messages from people I trying to control you who you think would kill you. I understand that you get three strikes in this game. Strike one is they try and shut you off and discredit you, which I've just been through. Strike two is they try and put you in jail for no reason. And strike three is they kill you. And one of my strikes is now gone, and I now firmly believe that they're going to try and kill me because they want me to be quiet and I'm not being quiet. And I have huge amounts of influence, which is what every single thing that exists. I, I like how that's a subtle admission that he is indeed, you know, this Jeffrey Epstein type. Out there, inside the Matrix, it's done so with a purpose. They don't give you the news for free because they want you to be informed. They give you the news for free because they want you to watch it so they can tell you what to think. Um, these biased networks, like The Free Show, The Third Rail, MSNBC, CNN, um, Fox News, Breitbart, The Daily Wire. Yeah, they have audiences to appeal to. People agree with them politically, and they just get ad revenue from that. And, and in certain cases, subscription revenue. However, there are fairly objective journalists out there, like the AP Reuters, Ad Fontes covers this, the AP and Reuters, who just do unbiased reporting. And it's not to pander to any narrative, generally. So, if so many people are complaining that, oh, this consent is being manufactured, they're playing into biases, they, they just want to, you know... Uh, put their presupposed conclusions out there. Why not read a Reuters article? Why not read an AP briefing? Like, if you have an hour to watch Tucker, you damn well have time to read 10 AP articles, okay? Like, what is it? Every class you learn in school, every TV program you watch, every website you find, all of them are created to keep your mind inside the box. Yeah, capitalism is the problem there, buddy. They keep you broke. You must adhere to society's rules and laws, even if you know they're unfair, so you have enough money to eat. This is how they control you. Yeah, capitalism. Fucking saber tooth tigers, or escape from the Mongol hordes, or managed to dodge bombs in the Second World War. All their went through just for this and to look at him, look at him, who he is, listen to his life story, listen to what he does on a day-to-day -day basis, and they would- Would they want him to be involved in war? There's the kill shot response you could give to literally any of these dumb, pseudo-motivational, you, you know, marble statue questions. These are so dumb. Feel nothing but 
When I was growing up in Luton in England, which is a highly Islamic town, there's lots of Muslims who live there. I was friends with some Muslim guys in college and they used to laugh at me all the time. One of them was like 19, worked in Tesco and had a Ferrari. I was like, bro, how do you have a Ferrari when you work in a f***? You work in a chicken. Uh, probably oil money. In chip shop. Like, how do you have a Ferrari when you work in a fast food restaurant? It's like, I got nine brothers and we all work together and we share the car. I was like, okay, well, why do you share the car? He said, no, no, you don't understand. You, I won't use the racial slurs, but he was like, you people, it was you and your, your three brothers. You all grow up, you all decide to get with your girl, you all go pay different rents, you all disappear, all your money gets spread out now, you're taking your girl on holiday and paying different rents and you're all separate. Me and my nine brothers live in one big house. We meet a woman, she moves into the house. The men are all folks on making money, the women are all looking after us, cooking clean, and you got nine men in the same house trying to pool their incomes. That's why we own the houses you rent from us. Brotherhood first. It's different. Yeah, anti-nuclear family, extended family. <laughs> Based Muslim guy? Oh, dude, he's proletariat, he's anti-nuclear family. Dude, this this British Muslim guy sounds like a leftist. He probably, like, voted for Labour or some other socialist party, dude. You people don't think that way. You fall in love. You fall in love with some you run off, you go pay her. It's like a different mentality, and that's why they win. That collectivism, yeah. That's why these British Muslims have won. That's why leftists you know, seem to have much better economic policy than just tax cuts and deregulation. But um, that's the show for today, people. Hope you enjoyed Omar coming on and hope you enjoyed my coverage of um, all the material we've gone over. So uh, thanks to you very much for tuning in. Hope to see you soon again, probably next Saturday. So take care.